so good evening uh, everyone a uh, warm welcome to all of you present here for uh, the webinar today a uh, brief introduction about myself i am susan thomas i take care of the admissions of our advanced certification program in blockchain and distributed ledger technologies i have almost 10 years of experience into education and prior to talent sprint i was working with the uh, indian school of business and voxen school of business helping students and professionals with better career decision Uh, now coming to the topic of today blockchain the new language of trust uh, blockchain is more than a technology and actually it is a movement to help redefine the most important business relationship through trust transparency and new found relationships and the world has come to realize the immense potential of blockchain which is making its presence felt in finance banking um, legal uh, supply chain healthcare and many other industries now it has given a new platform for business relationships combining ease of use low cost and high security and with its application across industries we are beginning to see how blockchain guides in a new form of trust for businesses to dive deeper uh, and understand about this new architecture of trust uh, we have mr sunil agarwal who is a blockchain expert and lead faculty for the triple it hyderabad talent sprints blockchain program Uh, Sunil has spent two decades in three integrated areas of uh, teaching, research, and blockchain uh, startup ecosystem. Uh, his core areas of interest lies in uh, uh, digital business modeling, online learning solution, and uh, blockchain technology solution startups. So, uh, in today's session, we would be also uh, discussing about the Triple IT Hyderabad's blockchain program and how it has helped professionals. to transform their career with blockchain expertise so uh, with that i would request sunil to take it over and uh, sunil we can start with a brief introduction about yourself over to you sunil thank you susan uh friends uh i'm in this ecosystem for now uh around 10 years i ventured into blockchain uh, domain in early 2012 so this is my 10th year in progress and uh, there was a very small uh, incident that happened and which actually made me jump into this particular scenario uh before uh, 2012 i was doing some advanced research from international relations theory perspective and my fundamental question was can we have international uh, at at an international level a uh, global sound money which means minimal inflation can we have a form of money which is globally acceptable and which is not issued by any single country so this was a precise research problem i was uh, trying to research for quite a number of years and uh, i had literally lost hope in terms of finding a solution and uh, uh, in early 2012 i happened to read a small article by a person called vitalik buterin i i had no idea who who that person was and that that was a very small article around 500 words but it was an article on bitcoin and when i read this article i could see a solution emerging a solution towards global sound money and that was the point when i just ventured into this era and never looked back and now it's my 10th year uh, in this journey i happened to teach uh, india's of india's first credit program in blockchain in january 2016 then happened to write india's first comprehensive blockchain book then happened to launch india's first blockchain executive program in october 2018 and here i am and as far as this particular program is concerned we are already uh, uh, in the sixth cohort and the admission for which you will be coming into this program would be the sixth uh, would be the seventh cohort so in that sense uh, apart from teaching and researching in this particular area uh, 
I have been associated with roughly half a dozen different blockchain startups in last uh, four five years. And currently, apart from teaching assignments, I'm currently doing two projects. One is uh, basically about reputation economy for all the internet properties. Uh, and second is basically building a dating network for uh, 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 on blockchain. So these are the two projects I'm currently doing, uh, apart from uh, doing my duties as the Dean of this particular program from Talent Sprint. So let's uh, dive into what is blockchain. See friends, uh, whenever we think of blockchain, the first problem uh, that actually comes to our mind is that it is something a uh, very, very deep technology. Of course, it's a deep technology, but it's being a deep technology doesn't make it problematic because the reality is that in certain sense, blockchain is a very, very simple thing because blockchain just symbolizes trust. But the problem here is that we have been living in a world where the definition of trust is something which has got very, very problematic. For example, let me give you certain uh, actual uh, scenarios of the real world. For example, when it comes down to uh, learning, education, uh, most of our decisions are uh, school certificates, CBSC uh, or ICSC. Then we move on to uh, universities, uh, university degrees, B.Tech, B.B.A., M.B.A., M.C., all those degrees. Now, the issue here is that this degree is given to us by a third party. Okay, this degree is not given to us by a teacher. It is given to us by a third party, which means that that party is the party over whom we trust, okay? Now move on to money. Whenever you make a transaction from uh, uh, your account to somebody's account, you are the sender and that person is the recipient. But who is changing the end account entries? You are not changing the account entries. There is somebody involved here. Who is that third party? That third party is a bank. Now, who controls banks? There is a Supra body, there is a Pan India body, which is called Central Bank, and it controls all the commercial banks of India, and not just it controls all the banks, it also issues money, it standardizes money, it decides how much currency to issue in a particular country, how much how many denominations to, to issue, and which de denomination should have how much uh, currency supply. So whether it is education, whether it is transactions, whether it is money, there is always a third party over whom we are trusting. So which means that between two actors, let's assume I am person A, you are person B. So between these two actors, there is a third party which means if this third party collapses, the relationship between A and B collapses. If something happens to RBI, who will issue money? If something happens to a commercial bank, who will make the transactions? If something happens to university, then who will issue the degree? And currently in the times of pandemic, all these anchors of trust, are now getting under very, very serious pressure. So before jumping into the world of blockchain, I want you to remember that the world of trust that we are living in is basically controlled by third parties. They may be banks, central banks, educational institutions, parliament, politicians, political parties, stock exchanges, but fundamentally they are third parties. They are working on your behalf, but in reality they are more powerful 
than all of you because they control all the business relations, all the economic relations, all the legal relations between you and others. So which means that the language of trust that we have been living in is a language that is controlled by third parties. Naturally, when somebody comes in this kind of a scenario and tells you, you don't need to depend upon a third party, the first reaction would be for you complete disbelief, okay? That's what has always happened. Anybody in the world, I know, uh, know most of uh, Bitcoin pioneers, all the big Bitcoin people or crypto uh, people or blockchain pioneers, whenever they, uh, they shared their experiences and their first experience with Bitcoin and blockchain was a complete disbelief. Most of people tell me or tell to the public that when they happened to see white paper of Bitcoin for the first time, they thought it was sheerly a fake thing. It was a complete lie. And they never looked, looked at that particular project for at least six months. And after six months, they, they looked at that project again. So the point here is that we all human beings are living in a certain kind of operating system based upon trusting third parties. And this system has so much ingrained in us over generations that we sometimes believe that this is the only perfect definition of trust. But the reality is not like that because if something happens to these centralized third parties, these institutional third parties, then we suffer very badly. For example, what happened during demonetization? We suffered very badly. What happened during poor implementation of GST? We suffered very badly. And currently, as far as coronavirus decisions are concerned, if the cent central government is not doing advanced orders of vaccines, then we are suffering. So it means that if there is a single definition of trust where we have to trust the third parties, it means there is something wrong with that. But why we are not able to think of alternatives? The reason here is that we are basically living in this system for, system for so many generations, so many decades, rather centuries, that we have got conditioned to it as a fish is conditioned to ocean. Fish doesn't challenge ocean. It doesn't even think of challenging ocean because it assumes that there is no life outside ocean. Similarly, we also think that there is no life outside this operating system of trusting third parties. So that's why most of people when they venture into the world of blockchain, they are not able to understand this predicament. That's why I'm saying that before you move into the world of blockchain, you need to question the model of trust that you have been living in. And that model tells you that for everything, there is a third party. For transactions, there are banks. For education, there are universities, schools, colleges. For uh, money, there is a central bank. For law, there is a parliament. But the reality is that blockchain says that why do we need third parties? Trust can be between peer-to-peer -peer actors. If I am a peer actor and you are a peer actor, then we are peer-to-peer -peer actors. We can settle a transaction among both of us. Now, the moment you hear this kind of a thing, it simply creates a complete disbelief. And that's where I want you to move ahead with me with this disbelief and start questioning and start learning. Because if you don't fill yourself with disbelief, you will not be able to ask genuine questions. 
and i want you to ask serious questions to me and to yourself okay so with this disbelief let's enter this uh, domain okay so as far as uh, today's uh, structure of the session is concerned i will be int introducing then how blockchain is becoming mainstream and what is the uh, structure of this executive program and then we we will have q and a okay see uh, the fundamental question about every technology be it blockchain be it be it aiml be it iot be it distributed computing or whatever or cloud or whatever every technology undergoes a certain kind of hype cycle and the most popular hype cycle is that of gartner and basically it it it, it moves like this first of all we basically undergo a very very hyper bullish wave that everything would change it does it doesn't happen like that then when people are over expecting and infrastructure is not uh, developing at that phase then we basically undergo a crash and then slowly and steadily the technology starts moving and i feel blockchain has already moved through this kind of a hype cycle because in 2017 it was a peak of expectations when entire blockchain or crypto assets market rose 30 times in less than 6 months 30 times in less than 6 months some coins uh, rose around 1000 times in less than 6 months this was literally insane and by december january 2018 everything started crashing and this happened like from 2018 to 2019 and 2020 this disillusionment was basically settling down and good projects started coming up and we started moving towards a slope of enlightenment and today we are in this phase slope of enlightenment which means that this is a phase of building solutions and more and more solutions are coming up and i will i will share one or two solutions with you also with the live chat so basically a uh, blockchain has undergone its correction a hype as well as reality it has undergone that kind of a correction now the issue here is that why we are discussing blockchain as a very very important technology because there are some very important things which have happened in last one year or so which have made blockchain very very important the first very important point was that in march 2020 supreme court actually lifted uh, the ban uh, by rb on crypto to fiat and fiat to crypto transactions which means now you can make a deposit to a bank deposit to a cryptocurrency exchange and today you'll be surprised to know that there is exchange called wazir x wazir x in april did 5. Point billion dollar worth of trading of course i'm i'm not going into detail of cryptocurrencies but in terms of interest public interest just one exchange did 5.2 billion dollar worth of trading just one exchange there are dozens of exchanges such exchanges in india and there are around 15 million crypto asset investors in india then a uh, world economic forum basically published a blockchain deployment kit and then uh, uh, people's bank of china announced it announced its cbdc pilot and that pilot has now actually Uh, expanded to a few big cities with few million users and not just that paypal has entered crypto world visa has entered crypto world and this startup which started around 3 years back from bangalore has crossed 10 billion dollar network market 10 billion dollar a blockchain startup from india has gone beyond 10 billion dollar and i and matic founder sandeep nailwal we have done 
uh, a few corporate training workshops together. So what I'm trying to say here is that in this world, if you are consistently working towards a certain goal, then that is rewarded. And now the issue here is that if we want to understand what blockchain is going to do to our life, our businesses, our economy, then we need to understand that what fundamental change in, in, in the definition of trust it is going to bring. But for that, you need to basically understand past because if you understand the past, you will understand the future. And that's where the history of trust or the model of trust within which you are living must be understood. And that's where I would use ledger technology. See, in this world, there has been only three kinds of ledger technology and there won't be any more. If you start with invention of scripts, uh, uh, it, along with that, we also started recording facts. And recording facts used to happen in a very, very typical fashion. People used to do single entry bookkeeping. What do you mean by that? In one ledger, credit entries were kept in another ledger, debit entries were kept. And this kind of a system was there for quite a long period, around 5,000 years, around 5,000 years. So we, we stuck with a ledger technology system for a quite a long, long period. And remember, in this period, the model of governance was more or less monarchy or you may call it them empires, okay? No democracy and monarchies. Uh, now, this system underwent a change around 500 years back when the second model of ledger technology emerged, which was called double entry accounting system. Now in double entry accounting system, we have very interesting way of recording entries. We basically divide a single page into two parts. On one side, we basically write credit entries. On one side, we write basically debit entries. And we make a total of all those entries at the bottom. Now the next page basically starts with this, like this, which means if you change one entry at any point, the, all the previous pages will be changed. Now, this double entry accounting system, when it was developed, it was not ever thought of that it would become the fundamental definition of trust. Because when it was issued for the first time, people took time to believe it. And slowly and steadily, people started double entry accounting system on a massive basis. Now, when I say massive basis, what was the implications? Now, the most important implication was that we started believing in uh, annual financial statement, which means that any business enterprise can issue its balance sheet to the public and that balance sheet can be validated by all the experts. So profit and expenditure and what is the uh, 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 cost, what is expenditure, what is the profit and whether there has been any uh, miscalculation, all those things could be verified by anybody else. When it happened for the first time and in that world, people could see that if let's assume there is a company which is earning 80%, there is a firm which is earning 80%. Now naturally, somebody would think that if a firm is earning 80%, then somebody would like to become a part of this 80% profit share, which means that person will contribute to the capital. This particular thing created something which was called joint 
स्टॉक कंपनीज और प्राइवेट लिमिटेड और पब्लिक लिमिटेड कंपनीज ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी वॉज फर्स्ट ज्वाइंट स्टॉक कंपनी मोस्ट पावरफुल कंपनी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड दिस वॉज बिग पॉसिबल बिकॉज इट वॉज द डबल एंट्री अकाउंटिंग एज अ लेजेड टेक्नोलॉजी विच मेड दैट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट पॉसिबल एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट ज्वाइंट स्टॉक कंपनीज वर क्रिएटेड एंड ऑल दो ज्वाइंट स्टॉक कंपनीज देन मेटा मॉर्फोस्ट in to multiple kinds of corporations which moved into telecommunications railways banking insurance and so many other things which means that when legit technology changes everything changes this was a period single entry accounting monarchies but the moment double entry accounting system came there emerged democracies and in 2009 when bitcoin came there happened something very very different because bitcoin basically did something very very interesting for example if person a sends bitcoin to person b okay now a is basically doing a debit entry and this is automatically becoming a credit entry at b's end and the transaction is basically going to blockchain which neither a nor b can change which means that now a and b can remain completely uh, satisfied with the status of the ledger that a has transferred x amount of bitcoin to b and this was happening with a decentralized consensus which means a is entry number 1 b is entry number 2 and blockchain is entry number 3 and no human being is directly controlling all these transactions and this decentralized consensus uh basically made triple entry accounting the most important legit technology of today's era and that in a simple way uh we say that this is the new language of trust and blockchain becomes the harbinger of this new language of trust now the issue here is that most of institutions that we have created they are ledger centric institutions for example uh your stock exchanges stock exchanges are basically ledgers those ledgers basically uh, tell you who owns what how much for example you own hdfc shares 1000 shares you transferred 500 shares to mr x so basically most of stock exchanges are ledger centric institutions banks banks are ledger centric institutions your custodians uh, are basically ledger centric institutions which means that all ledger centric institutions were built on double entry accounting system so if the accounting technology is changing to triple entry system it means that now these institutions will also change banking will change stock exchanges will change central banking would change it means that if this entire definition of trust is going to change then what would be the form of that new society will be will that be the same society where india is fighting with pakistan will that be same society where india is pakistan uh, india and china are fighting will that be same society where nuclear wars are are a big threat no that will be a very very different society so the issue here is if you want to understand this new world because triple entry accounting system will disintermediate lots and lots of institutions you don't need to create a bank with Two hundred thousand employees. You can do the same job with literally uh, zero number of people. You can make transactions with zero number of people. 
so the issue here is that we are moving into a new world and that new world is building a new definition of trust and now this this entire technological shift is going to replicate itself across multiple zones central bank for example china is launching its cbdc similarly india has announced that it will launch its official digital currency very soon dates are not announced plans are not detailed out but it has announced that it is looking to uh, to do a official digital currency commercial banking today i think eight or nine commercial banks in india are having a public relationship with ripple which is a uh, blockchain platform for inter global interbanking transactions stock markets uh, a large number of stock markets are moving to moving from t plus 3 settlement to t plus 0 settlement which means almost instant settlement and australian stock exchange has already announced its plan and multiple other stock exchanges are moving into that kind of a thing financial derivatives debt derivatives multiple other kinds of uh, financial products are moving on to blockchain and identity and ownership records are also moving on to for example for healthcare uh, your uh, patient records are moving on to blockchain for example in usa uh, a large number of digital health solutions have already moved to blockchain so the reality here is that blockchain has actually grown to a very very big sector in last 10 years and it started with multiple uh, things but after bitcoin the most important thing that happened was ethereum ethereum is a new kind of blockchain which introduced a very very interesting thing which was called smart contracts smart contracts are basically a kind of code which can self execute which means that here you can create a decentralized organization you can create a decentralized application you just send a certain amount of tokens to that contract and it will execute a particular transaction so today you can build a decentralized exchange on ethereum so there are lots of such solutions there are more than 3000 de decentralized apps on ethereum and there are currently more than two dozen smart contract platforms like that of ethereum so the reality here is that this entire system has moved at such a big pace that now it has built solutions for multiple industries you will be surprised to know there are at present 10000 different blockchains 10000 different blockchains so the fact here is that today this entire thing has moved at such a pace that you name a sector and blockchain is being used by there for example uh, banking and finance is a major adoption government and public goods for example recently you will be surprised to know government of maharashtra is issuing uh, your testing reports on metic blockchain media and entertainment healthcare technology multiple other sectors so in that sense this is a very very interesting system that is emerging here okay so i'll stop here and uh, first i will take questions around blockchain this new language of trust then i will move into second round about the program yeah please raise your hand <coughs> abdul go ahead please unmute yourself and ask abdul please unmute yourself okay anybody else i think abdul has some issue with unmuting yeah abdul go ahead
Okay, in the meanwhile, somebody else, please raise your hand. Praveen, go ahead. Can Praveen. you hear me? Yeah, can you hear okay. me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate your uh, insightful uh, knowledge about uh, blockchain. Uh, as you mentioned in the earlier, when you uh, highlighted the single entry accounting, the double entry accounting and the triple entry accounting, uh, you made mention of the system of government that each accounting uh, has brought, bring into uh, woman, uh, humanity. The first yeah. entry, you mentioned uh, monarchism government. The double entry, you mentioned democracy. So the triple entry accounting uh, as a professor that have a deep understanding of this concept very well. What type of government, system of government do you think this uh, technology is going to bring to the world? Uh, to be honest, Abdul, this is, I would rather say, this is the most difficult question of the century. Uh, and I must be very honest in saying to you that I don't know the perfect answer to this particular question, but I can definitely share some of my speculations with you. My understanding here is that uh, the most important political unit in the history of world has not been nations, not been civilizations. The most important unit of governance has been city. If you, if you, if you go across the world, you can find some cities which are 5,000 years old, 3,000 years old, 2,000 years old. So first, my understanding here is that we are going to move from number one, territorial states to virtual states. Now, which means that most of our digital transactions will be on cloud, number one. But the issue here is that everything cannot move to virtual uh, cloud, which means, for example, uh, how to handle your uh, education, uh, for example, school-based education, how to handle transfer of land or other fixed assets. So in that sense, my understanding here is that we are going to move from a hybrid state of uh, virtual states and city-states. Cities would be the most important political unit in years and decades to come. That's my first uh, prediction or speculation. I, 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 I'm not claiming that I'm right. I may be definitely wrong, but this is the first observation, first speculation towards that. Second thing here is that uh, we are going to see the emergence of both public money and private money. If you go around 100 years back before the launch of central banking in 1914, the world had lots of private currencies. For example, just America had more than 800 private currencies issued by different banks. So my understanding here is that we are moving into a dual world of public money issued by governments as well as private money issued by private actors. For example, you can regard Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as private money. This is the second major change which I'm seeing in the world. The third major change which I'm seeing here is that in terms of law, naturally, nations are the source of law through parliaments and through governments. Yes, no doubt about that. But the issue here is that nations can make law only for their own jurisdiction. What about those things which are beyond your jurisdiction? Now, if nations cannot come together to build a global legal system, then who will build that? That's where the notion of smart contracts is going to be very, very powerful. So my understanding here is we are going, going from uh, politically governed legal institutions to software governed legal states. So that these are my three predictions. I hope uh, you would like the answer, Abdul. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yes. It's very, 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 very exciting, especially the aspect when you mentioned the issue of uh, the emergence of public money and uh, the brief history about how US uh, Federal Reserve have been, been both private and uh, public uh, uh, collaboration in terms of printing money. And of recent, the uh, chairman of uh, Federal Reserve, Jeremy Bowen, he also highlighted that uh, there's been a significant impact of uh, 
uh, public participation in the issuing of stable coins. So I think uh, that your uh, prediction is going to is going is, is already into a reality, and as, as uh, and also about the issue of the territoriality you mentioned, I think uh, probably that is the reason why we are having a different yeah. uh, kind of changes among all governments now. They are all talking about having yeah. a kind of uh, data that you link your uh, same number to your account number and all that. And also in terms of law, there's no way that we are going to have a kind of uh, financial system that unify us, that we, is, which is going to bring about a new financial uh, uh, a law that is going to govern all, yeah. all the country. Uh, it's very, very uh, enlightening, I think. Uh, um, Thank you. I'm, I'm Thank you. Satisfied. Okay, Ab Ab Abdul, let me go to the next question. Praveen, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm so, uh, thank you for having us today. And uh, my question is uh, not even a question, just a kind of clarification. The, the promissory note has been the biggest critical instrument that probably has balanced powers over centuries and which later translated into currency, right? But yeah. right now what you are revealing is that uh, even the currency was kind of modulated by a centralized agency, let it be the king, let it be the kingdom or now the central banks. But with blockchain, uh, you were saying that this is going to create a mighty platform that uh, it's going to erase all the boundaries. An individual can be a bank and a bank can be an individual. So I'm getting that's probably where blockchain might play a big role. But my question is this, the replacement of currency has been a pivotal uh, uh, I mean, act, uh, 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 you know, uh, pivotal job that all the centralized banking institutions and the power mongers have been trying to do. But do you think black, blockchain will be able to create devices where we can store whatever we are and whatever we have that can be reflected with the uh, centralized servers? Is it something we can expect? Because I still cannot imagine living in a world without any form of tangible um, what can I say? Wealth, or maybe my question is all over the place. I'm sorry, but I'm okay. just excited See, about the concept. Try to understand. Try to understand. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, have you ever used a cryptocurrency wallet, blockchain wallet? Have you uh, ever? No. Okay, that's why you are asking this question. Right. Yes, because for, uh, for your information, currently in this world there are more than more than 120 million blockchain. Uh, you, uh, blockchain asset investors, number one. And there are more than 200 million uh, uh, blockchain wallet users. When I say wallet, wallet means where you can make transactions between different players. Mm. And today you name any blockchain, whether it is Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Solana, Zcash, multiple, all right. the currencies are being used in a completely digital manner, which means it is a, a kind of an intangible thing. You can't touch it, but it's a software governed thing. For example, my son, who is 16 years old, doesn't bother about banks. He uses cryptocurrencies uh, on his wallet. He, does, he doesn't have even imagination of banks. He, whenever he uh, wants to make a birthday gift to his friends, do you know what is the most popular gift that he makes to his friends? V-Bucks. If you know about Fortnite game uh, on- Yeah, 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 yeah. He, that is a gift that he says. He says that V-Bucks are far more important than your money. Oh, I, I, I get that. I'm not no, saying no, see, that. No, no, see, let, 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 let me complete. My issue here is that ultimately, whatever asset you have, that asset may be money, stock, stocks, land records, or all other forms of promissory notes. Ultimately, those promissory notes are doing two things. Number one, they are basically proving your right to a property or right to use a particular uh, balance of amount. And second thing they are doing is that they are being issued by somebody who is trustworthy. I'm saying both these functions are getting disintermediated because on blockchain, transaction is automatically a settlement number one. Okay? 
because when I'm sending uh, my transaction to you, that transaction is automatically getting settlement settled on the blockchain itself. So blockchain is not just a payment network. It is also a audit network, number one. Number two, you can create a token symbolizing currency, symbolizing identity, symbolizing any kind of asset, which means that in this kind of a situation, you can create any kind of promissory note. So which means since blockchain is nothing but a programmable ledger. So this makes blockchain a far more radical thing which can replace almost all the instruments of trust we, we human beings have ever innovated. Clear? Sonil, can I? Yeah. Can yeah. I? Okay. My question is this that, okay, all this, all this technology is basically stored on some sort of devices, right? In case of Gaza and Hamas is where well, I'm little concerned about it. A country is bombing another country and their servers or whatever they are stored are, have, are gone. Normally, a currency would be something that you can use to even get out of the country or do something. Now, how would blockchain come into the picture if okay. I have invested oh. Oh. everything in coins or stuff? I mean, right now I have, uh, let us okay. say I have- Okay, a, okay. okay. Got, okay. It. got it, got it, got it. That's okay. where I'm- First of all, uh, let's assume uh, this is your device, clear? Yeah. And you have saved, let's assume, uh, 10 ether on this particular device, clear? Okay. And this device has a cryptocurrency wallet called MetaMask. On this MetaMask, you have been given a private key and public key pair, clear? Okay. Now behind this private and public key pair, there is something called a mnemonic key phrase, a okay. 12 letter word. Yeah. Now, if you remember this 12 letter key word, hmm. which is very easy to remember, and any, any, anybody can remember, it's a very simple language, simple word, uh, combination of words. Okay. You can recover your asset in any part of the world, even this is thrashed, uh, destroyed by a bomb explosion. So basically the blocks are all over the world. Because blockchain is not stored in, in a single device. It is stored on thousands of computer nodes spread across all parts of the world. Clear? Yes, yeah, so is central banking system, but you have less trust there. But here you, you are incorporating a, a significant yeah. layer of trust into yeah. the system. So nobody can, nobody can destroy your asset in any way. Even nuclear bomb cannot destroy your asset. Okay. Oh, well, let's not go to the Holocaust. That... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so let, 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 let but, me go to but, the next, next question, please. Praveen. That's it. Thank uh, you, uh, Sunil. Thank you very much. Venkat, go ahead. Uh, hi, Smilia. Uh, thanks, thanks for giving uh, uh, insights of uh, this uh, blockchain. So my question is about the adaptability. So do we have any roadmap on the adaptability? So when it comes to a layman, so uh, he has a lot of property, but how can he adapt, adapt this thing, uh, this particular okay, technology? Got it. Got it. Yeah. See, first of all, adoption will not happen in just one go adoption will happen in multiple manners and remember most of the times people will never notice that they are using blockchain for example when uh, yes let's assume kotak mahindra bank kotak mahindra bank today can make a global transaction in less than 10 seconds which was earlier being done in five days okay, okay. now that kind of a transaction when it is going to uh, going into the account of a user user doesn't even know that blockchain is being used but Kotak Mahindra bank is using ripple blockchain so in most of the cases since we are using most in the most of the cases digital transactions route so most of people would never notice that it is happening on blockchain for example when you are uh, riding on your uh, uh, in your in your cab or in your uh, car you never notice about what kind of technology is being used in the combustion engine. You never yeah. bother about that. So in 99% of cases, you will, people, users will never notice. Today, you do you know in the world right now, right now, 
roughly 10 million blockchain transactions are happening every day every day and, and about the confidentiality and all these things how can we trust that confidentiality do we have yeah. anything okay. okay see it depends upon what do you mean by confidentiality see, because confidentiality can have multiple definitions for example it can be a selective privacy it can be uh, uh, pseudonymity pseudonymous yes. or it can be anonymous now blockchain can be used for all these different contexts of confidentiality for example if you want a completely anonymous transaction use zero knowledge proof based blockchains for example zcash you can use that if you want a pseudonymous blockchain then you can use ethereum or bitcoin blockchain if you want a selective kind of a block uh, confidentiality where for example patient records are are involved where you can share the records only with the doctor with nobody else so in that kind of a case you can design an enterprise blockchain with selective rights okay so all these options are available venkat okay so Thanks. i have a, a one more question and i will not allow after this yogesh go ahead yeah thank you uh, sunil uh, the question my question is very uh, basic i mean i'm looking from the from the career standpoint and what i'm trying to understand here is now that there's a buzz around a lot of uh, regarding the cloud ai as well as with the bitcoin um, i have been reading few articles and it says that it's good to know about the bitcoin but really not to invest your career in this See, I'm not, I'm, see, Yogesh, I'm not at all going to ask you ever in this cohort to invest your career into Bitcoin. Yes, I'm going to ask you to invest your career into blockchain. Blockchain is million times larger than Bitcoin. Remember. Okay. Million times larger than Bitcoin. Don't ever forget this. See, ultimately, Bitcoin blockchain is a is a blockchain with just one use case that is a currency but you can program smart contracts you can program multiple assets on 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 blockchain so in that sense you can make million uses of blockchain other than bitcoin so why do you focus on bitcoin bitcoin started blockchain but that was rather blockchain 1.0 today we are in the world of blockchain 3.0 Bitcoin do can do only seven transactions per second. Today you have blockchain which can do ten thousand transactions per second. Sure, sir. And uh, just a follow up question on that: What do you see the future of uh, blockchain? How do you see it? I mean, uh, ten years down the line and twenty years. You see it. Yes, I I won't tell you about next ten years. Let me tell you the story of last ten years. When I ventured into this blockchain world, there were only three blockchains, and the total market cap of entire blockchain assets was one billion dollar. Today, in my tenth year of blockchain life, this value has jumped from three blockchains to ten thousand blockchains, and total market cap has jumped from one billion to. 1.7 trillion 1700 billion so in 10 years i have myself seen 1700 times growth if this kind of a growth can happen in last 10 years you can imagine what can happen in next 10 years sure thanks uh, sunil thank you okay so let's move into the last part of our session so uh, about uh, sunil yeah So there are two questions in the chat also. If you will be able to take it all, so. Okay, just a minute. Okay, we wait. Paul and just no sing. Okay, uh, just no. Uh, Proof of stake is most recently used in future-proof consensus mechanism. Will cryptocurrency always be part of blockchain? No, no way. I'm already saying that currency is just one kind of limited programmable tool. You can program endless things. Remember, if you go across the world and calculate the total value of wealth. the actual amount of currency printed in this world would be just around 
trillion. But stock market is worth 300 trillion. And all the derivatives, all the other assets comprise around 1,600 trillion. So which means, just know that in reality, currency usage in blockchain is a very, very minuscule application. Okay. And yes, a blockchain can definitely exist without a native coin, but that would be called an enterprise blockchain. Okay, Vivek, uh, how does one authenticate trust in crypto world? Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the traditional world where physical audits take place and can authenticate the... See, Vivek, I've already mentioned that blockchain is not just a payment system. It is also a real-time audit system. Because here transaction is automatically settled. And when transaction is settled, it is basically settled in a certain manner. Let me showcase here. See, in, sorry. Basically, like this, there are multiple blocks and every block is cryptographically linked. And within one block, there are transactions like this. And these transactions are, are basically connected like this. So like this, like this is a cryptographically structured, which means that if you just change a one single transaction, the entire block and entire chain would get disturbed, which means that here blockchain is basically a temper proof architecture, which means that blockchain cannot be tempered and anybody who tries to temper would have to face a huge, huge cost. Okay. Uh, Yogesh has asked, if blockchain is secure, distributed, virtual, can it replace cloud and computing? And can we say it is just an orchestration in cloud? Uh, I would say that, what do you mean by cloud? Cloud is basically uh, aggregating the computing capability through a centralized node. Am I right? Now, what is blockchain? Blockchain is doing the same thing, but in a completely distributed as well as decentralized manner. So my prediction here is that in next 10 years, blockchain will replace cloud computing almost completely. In another two years, Ethereum-like blockchains would be able to do roughly 100,000 transactions per second. So this is the kind of future that we are looking, okay? So let, me, let us go into the other part of the program. Uh, see, uh, about this particular program, uh, this particular program is 24 weeks, which means uh, around six months long program. And classes happen every Saturday. And uh, every Saturday we have three sessions. Every session is 90 minutes. And this entire program is focused both on public chains and private chains. So, as far as public chain is concerned, we will uh, teach you Ethereum. And as far as private chain is concerned, we will teach you Hyperledger Fabric. But before that, we will teach you foundations of blockchain, where we will discuss Bitcoin, crypto economics, history of ledger technologies, multiple other things. And we basically focus both on the business aspect, business model, because blockchain is also a business model, as well as the tech aspect, which means the hands-on aspect. And where I mean that you will be basically spending 50-50 uh, distribution of time in theory and practice. So total time is 140 hours. And out of those 140 hours, around 72 hours are basically practice-based. And in that practice space, two, uh, three labs are concerned, lab-based assignments are concerned, hackathon, which is capstone, uh, is concerned. So which means... This is not a theoretical course only. It is a practice-based course. And in this, uh, you will be uh, having a learning management system. And through that, you will be able to access your learning material. All the lectures will be recorded and they will be available to your LMS all the times. You can use them on laptop, on your phone, anytime. And 
there will be a total number of roughly 10 plus faculty members. Half of those faculty members would be from IIIT Hyderabad and other half would be arranged by uh, Talent Sprint. So, and these faculty members would be the best of the industry and best of the academic field. So in that sense, we can ensure that uh, you will get the best of learning content. <coughs> and this is total of five modules, foundations, as I told you. Then the second module is dedicated to Ethereum. At the conclusion of it, there would be a lab. Same hyperledger at the conclusion, there would be a lab. In blockchain section, there would be assignments, uh, a case studies. And then here again would be a lab. So in this sense, we have distributed this entire program into 140 hours and 24 weeks. And as far as participants are concerned, most of our participants are fairly experienced people, 10 or 15 years is, is the average experience. And a large percentage of those people are interested in their own startups or building the separate vertical for their own existing organizations. And <clears throat> currently, uh, this program has produced four startups and two more are in pipeline. And not just startups, people from this program has have moved on to better careers, different uh, companies. So in that sense, program has helped a number of people. And these start these are the startups. The first startup that we uh, this program has created is called Asli Medicine, which is basically uh, building a, a use case on avoiding how to avoid counterfeit medicines. And this uh, startup emerged from our first cohort. This is the second startup, which is called Palm Block. It produced a product called Trail Ledger, which basically uh, focuses on advanced high value diagnostic solutions and ensuring their uh, transparency of supply chain. And this is the third uh, startup, which is basically dedicated to real estate solutions, which we are ba they basically uh, build fractional tokens of your real estate projects. And then there is a fourth startup, which is uh, not actually a startup, which is a policy group. And this policy group published a white paper on corporate currencies in blockchain era. So the moment they published this white paper, after a month of that publish publication, uh, Facebook announced its project Libra, which is now called Project Dime. So in that sense, our people, our alumni could see a very larger picture coming out of blockchain universe and they, could, they can see the future. And current uh, cohort, which, which is uh, six cohort, and we are now going to start uh, cohort seven in September and applications are open and we have only 75 seats and 15 enrollments have already happened. So this is uh, for all for today. I would like to see more questions. Please raise your hand. Sunil, by the time, can I launch the poll as well? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. I would request everyone to just participate in this long poll. Yeah. Please raise your hand. Uh, Anybody who has yet not asked, I would like to give that person an opportunity. Okay, Yogesh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Sunil, my question is from the, uh, from the development standpoint, are there any language prerequisites and that would be covered as part of uh, this course? See, uh, uh, Yogesh, the issue here is that most of people who join our program, they have average of 15 to 20 years of experience and most of them are BTECs, but uh, uh, they did, did coding in early part of their life, but in last four or five years, they have literally uh, moved into a complete business uh, and functional zone where they don't do coding on a, on a daily basis. So. These people have moved into uh, this program and learned from this program quite well. So I would say that even if you don't know coding, if you have love for coding, you are most welcome. And don't forget, 
in both the labs we have two tracks developer track and management track so you can opt for either of these tracks okay sure thank you sir abdul go ahead uh yes sir uh, can you hear me yeah yeah okay uh you did mention that uh, uh blockchain uh it's very difficult to to hack except probably 51% attack but uh what about uh if uh, we currently we have the invention of blockchain and that is the reason why scientists and programmers agree that it cannot be hacked but what what, what about when we have a superior uh, technology probably like a quantum uh, technology <laughs> that have a superior i uh, was called uh algorithm you know blockchain yeah. is just about uh sha256 uh ashton algorithm so what about we have uh, a superior technology like quantum algorithm so what becomes of blockchain is it are we going to say it's going to be centralized because it's government that is going to uh make use of the yeah, quantum. yeah. got it got it uh, abdul uh, this question is a very very wide a live question in blockchain community because Uh, lots of blockchains particularly the block first generation blockchains like that of bitcoin which depend upon a uh, uh, sha256 kind of a cryptographic algorithm they do feel that there is a possibility of a quantum computers taking over these kinds of blockchains first of all quantum computing as of now is not a mainstream technology which at present it is not being used or it cannot be used for industrial purposes at at a scale why the reason here is to create a com- quantum computer you need to create a a specific kind of atmosphere which is basically minus 273 degree celsius which is absolute zero temperature now this is the kind of situation which is not easy to create which means only in that kind of a situation you can basically create superconducting fluids and in that kind of a situation quantum computing can be created yes in a lab environment quantum computing can definitely be created but in a real industrial situation quantum computing is still at least two decades away this is a scientific fact now the issue here is that what happens to blockchain if this becomes a reality in another two decades for your information all the blockchains which are existing today they are already preparing themselves for uh, building themselves into a post quantum cryptographic domain for example in bitcoin if you have if you have noticed recently that bitcoin has activated a very important taproot uh, protocol taproot protocol basically introduces a very new signature scheme which is called a uh, schnorr signature signature the issue here is that not just bitcoin other blockchains are also introducing <laughs> multiple such cryptographic innovations for example zcash is already introducing something called zk stack zk stack is completely quantum resistant blockchain tool so in that sense most of blockchains are basically innovating on these cryptographic things and that would safeguard them from all future possibilities of quantum computers is that fine abdul uh very very very, very fine sir very fine sir thank you much okay friends it's time to say bye i hope so okay. we don't have any yes, more sir. question yes sir okay during, okay friends during 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 your during your explanation you wanted to ask a question before you continue explain the explanation thank you thank you thanks sunil uh, thank you everyone for joining us today for this session uh, as sunil told you that the next batch of our program is going to start by september uh, you can reach out to us for any queries or uh, doubts regarding the program uh, we'll be there to help you out thanks everyone